used to the microphone on my my Mac. Uh, I'm just gonna straighten up a little bit so you can see me. But now I'm gonna try to make a screen. I'm set up the mix in Luna with the tracks. Uh, there's nothing being done so far. It's just a mix. Hi guys, it's an uh, yeah as usual. It's my best time to work in the morning and uh, I've been mixing uh, I've been mixing uh, the gig and I'm now taking down uh, different ways of mastering it so the levels match in the correct way um, the more I hear this, the better I think it is. So uh, I, I I used a couple of different mastering, mm, uh, call it programs, because I want to compare what happens in. Uh, first, I used WaveLab, then I used um, uh, what's it called Ozone. Uh, and now I'm try I also use uh, Slate Digital GFX just to see. Uh, I mean, he's a very highly respected guy, and I think if he can do something out of it, uh, this is the first of all, I used the Luna uh, program and mixed it down from Luna, and these three. Um, Mastering programs uh, have a go, and I also tried the uh, the Waves program, the ARTG uh, mastering program. I just ran it through it, uh, didn't tweak it, and uh, <laughs> I must say it sounds already very very good, so in my ears. But they are old and tired and. Uh, yeah, I'll be very excited to see what's uh, gonna happen when I put it into YouTube. I don't follow this uh, YouTube um, kind of compression rates and things like that. I try to to feed the file as it is. Uh, I, um, as I mentioned, I think before, I think a lot of uh, the videos are souped up. Uh, they're very loud. And uh, that's probably okay for the TV and uh, well, yeah, what not, whatever you're listening to this. But uh, if you check out the more pro channels, uh, you will find that the levels are quite a lot l lower. Uh, the DaVinci program tells me that you shouldn't go all louder than this for a film. And, uh, in my uh, opinion, this is kind of a film, so, uh, well, it's not Hollywood, but <laughs> it is uh, nevertheless a film. But uh, I remember once a guy showed up in the studio with a, a double Ampeg SVT 300 system, with eight or ten eight-inch speakers in each cabinet and a big uh, arena, and that, and it was, and the guitar player came with uh, double tops and two cabinets. And, uh, what the hell are you gonna record, or are you gonna have a gig somewhere, or what's happening here? Well, they they want to record and they want to use this. Uh, and uh, okay, we give it a try. And the guy got the, the headsets jumping like this. So the drummer and I was driving the headphones, the headphones amps, and the headphones uh, to smithereens. And I went out, and they wanted louder, louder, louder. Why? I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't put on the cans uh, in the control room uh, with this uh, kind of volume. And uh, then the sun takes off, and then it takes out earplugs. 30 dB uh, damping earplugs. Uh, what the hell? 
I'm nearly destroying my equipment here, and you're uh, the cats are jumping like this on your head on, <laughs> and you're sitting in there, and you want more kick and, and things like that, and you have ear plugs. <laughs> Take out the bloody plugs and hear what's happening. Uh, I promise you, after that, the levels went down, and. Uh, we ended up uh, using a small uh, preamp for a bass, and uh, the guitarist used some board he had uh, directly in the board. And, uh, we had a good time, it was sound good. So, um, but in a way, it's not their fault because they've been watching uh, TV and videos. That, this was in the 80s, so it's not a long time ago. Uh, and they get expired and uh, and worked up about how it's supposed to be uh, in a live situation. And I think the when you go to the studio, you bring all the best gear you can uh, wrestle up, and uh, uh, it's not really like that. I mean, guys like Bill Gibbons record on a small uh, ten watt, fifteen watt uh, Fender amp and. Uh, Things like that, so we're just gonna open the project. The bands, by the way, called if I didn't mention it before, a tonic for the troops. Uh, apparently, it's a Boomtown Rats uh, <laughs> title on a record years back. So this this is the project, how it looks. Um, let me zoom this in a little bit. We change to another view, the mix view. Here is almost this is actually every every channel going on over here. And what I really appreciate and what I really use a lot, it's this. There's not a lot going on here. It's a small uh, thing. This is the API. Um, preamp with you have everything you need here it's an api uh, module uh, made by universal audio so uh, this one i use frequently on uh, all the tracks all the drum tracks on the bass i use it only on the microphone i use two lines and you know, one line from the amp and one from the mic and then I make a bus and I use a Neve preamp. Looks like this. As you can see, it's not much going on. I've taken down a little bit around 60. Actually, 220, I've taken down a little bit. I don't know, I have to explain this in the right way because. And here, this is uh, also a plugin from Universal Audio. Uh, it's uh, just something happens when you drive the signal through this kind of thing. Uh, I love it on the bass. But on the bass, I also use this is a universal audio thing something called a sub enhancer. It's not doing much, it's just. Um, just cleans up the fundamentals a little bit uh, if you don't overdo it you can have so much space so you won't believe it but uh, it's uh, it's not the point i'm not using it to make more bass i'm using it to make uh, more quiet uh, more um, controlled bass uh, I, i'm not going to get into how you use all the stuff uh, because that's uh, available on net, but this is the stuff I use on the channels, and I use also this uh, very tiny bit of uh, this is a real verb from U UA again, uh, reverb room on the drums, just uh, t just a fraction, and I, it, it's nearly not audible, but it's there but to enhance the snare a little bit. Yeah, and I use only four marks on the drums. It's the bass drum, the snare drum, overhead left, overhead right. And I have a drum bus. 
and the drum room as I, I just showed you that. Um, it's quite interesting uh, how the drums uh, sound. Uh, and I, I use also on the drums. On the bus, I use a tape machine. Let's see if we can open that. It opens uh, maybe if I'm lucky. Try again. So th this is not doing anything actually. It's just running through the. I'm not running the wheels. I just run through the machine. So uh, so you can run the wheels, of course, but uh, and you can add some noise and things, and you can adjust the frequency range and yeah, a lot of things. So uh, again, you see the API on the base. Um, on the saxophone, I use different and the same reverb, but a different setting, just barely audible. But on the piano, here I use uh, a Pultec EQ, not the API, but a Pultec, also a universal audio thing. And the same uh, on the saxophone. That's it. So. Um, uh, in, in not much of this on the master channel there's a bit more going on but they're not doing so much uh, they're just there to to observe first I use a relay it's called that's uh, uh, you can boost the level a little bit because I need it into this machinery uh, it's an uh, it's an old emulation or uh, something I don't know what uh, Master EQ uh, from T Rex. Um, I don't know what the original is, uh, but it's certainly working in my world. And there I just cut off a little bit of boominess. Uh, it's not much. Um, then I use this. Uh, I have it over on the other screen. Let me just remove it. This is the tonal balance control. I like to keep things in there. You can see the signal in different ways. And this is not doing anything to the sound, it's just uh, surveillance. And just see what to do, what to do. This is the insight. Where I, uh, this is actually more for the mastering world, but uh, you have uh, these fields. Uh, it's not, again, not doing anything with the sound, and you have. Uh, I'm not sure how much sound there is. Here. As you can see, this, uh, I'm just playing very low now. I don't know. You can see we have a spectrogram here uh, and uh, stuff like that. And I I have levels. You can see how loud this uh, this uh, this is. Uh, you, you, you can't be a slave to this thing, but you're in the ballpark. I'm in the ballpark here, and I can. Take the rest in the mastering. Sorry, I have to take my pill. To pill. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nightmare. I have to do this every two times a day. I have to take these pills. Room, yeah, I put it in. And this is a simulation of, of the room is recorded in. Except this is capital, so it's a little bit, just a fraction more expensive. Just a little, little bit. Couple of hundred millions, maybe. <coughs> and uh, if I turn it off. The mix, uh. The mix, in a way, 
dies a little bit. It's still a very good mix, it still sounds beautiful, but... Uh, and be very, I, I, I've used tiny, 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 tiny minimalistic EQ, because I EQ'd it live on my Midas, Midas uh, live console, and that's quite sufficient. I put the room back, now you can hear it's, it's a diff different thing. I move from the mic and you can hear the difference. Off. On. Not very, very different, but I'm gonna put the finished recording uh, uh, up with this uh, thing. Uh, this is basically how I set up a mix. So uh, there's a lot going on on the master trip, apparently, but uh, there's not sound treatment except this. Uh, very cheap capital room and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, a little EQ for to cut the bonus, which uh, you're almost bound to have. Uh, it's just making it nicer. It's not actually doing a whole lot of things. So this is the step before I go to uh, what you call the mastering step. Which I uh, probably shouldn't do myself, but uh, yeah, there's an interesting thing with this um, relay. It, uh, it's an, you can balance. You can see I have a negative uh, 0.05 dB balance to left, and you can level, gain level, but but this is uh, quite an interesting thing because I can limit the low frequency here. I put a limiter a limit in or a cut the low frequency. I put it here in uh, 26 hertz. Doesn't sound like uh, you don't hear anything down there but your uh, hi-fi or whatever you're gonna play it on you can hear it uh, and not hear it but uh, and you use yeah, I'm gonna move again. You kind of use uh, low frequency energy in your system uh, and that takes away, uh, if you use a lot of energy down there, it takes away energy further up in the, in the system uh, that you use for playback. The more energy you have in the lows, the more wattage, if, if it makes any sense to it, the more energy you, ha you have to ha have in the system. Uh, the, it doesn't do. It doesn't have any purpose to leave the muddiness down there, uh, stealing your uh, power. So uh, it's just there to clean up the uh, the inaudible things. So uh, I'm gonna jump in now and uh, try to edit <laughs> something out of this. Uh, but to use the Luna, like th that's like mixing on a big uh, console, which I cannot. Point one, I can't afford it. Point two, I can't maintain it. Point three, I have no space for it. So I used to have a big one before, but uh, it costs a fortune to have, and uh, you can do exactly the same thing with. Uh, with the software version, and uh, well. If you have a console costing uh, eight, nine hundred thousand, uh, one million maybe, uh, you need a room costing uh, f four or five times more and uh, all the equipment. This never ends. If you're thinking about building a studio, don't do it. I tried. I had a big studio and it, uh, I said, don't do it. If you're interested in doing this, start in a small room uh, somewhere and build it from there. Uh, all, I mean, practically all of the big uh, rooms, the big uh, studios, are uh, bankrupt. They don't, uh, they're not in business anymore. So uh, there are a few, f a handful left. 
um, this kind of investment uh, and this will be difficult to um, but if you're a multimillionaire by all means do it I would do it if I had the, main, uh, the money to do it I would just to enjoy myself but then you have the world's um, most expensive hobby uh, hobby and uh, I think maybe <laughs> start collecting cars or do something else don't do this so uh, that's, a, that's a good advice uh, see how I ended up with uh, virtually nothing and uh, still paying for the mistake I did with the very big studio so uh, well if you want to um, have a nice life don't get involved in that big bro project uh, I, I know it's fun but it's uh, too expensive I'm still working with this uh, recording and uh, now I'm making the commercial master uh, if you like and uh, that's uh, a lot louder than uh, what we will consider cool actually but it's uh, to be played in commercial settings so uh, I'm doing a screenshot now and I'll try to explain uh, on the way what I'm doing but uh, yeah I ended up using Ozone 8 which is not the newest version I know that but uh, I own it so I'm free to use whatever I like I uh, never use any uh, pirate copies or anything I own everything I I have it here in the studio. So, first of all, uh, I had to EQ a little bit on this song. Um, this is the song with the piano intro. I think it's not track number two, yeah. You can see. It's quite quiet in the start, but it's coming. And uh, uh, I absolutely have to. I had to EQ the bass a little bit and uh, yeah, mid band and uh, more highs because this is made for uh, average hi-fi uh, system. So. That's why I'm doing this. This is the EQ setting. Uh, as you can see, I have no uh, compression on it. But I use a little bit of dynamic uh, EQ. The, that's, um, you can see uh, it's moving a little bit here. That's uh, an EQ that cuts exactly where uh, the level is a little bit too loud and cuts in and compresses exactly that level. And uh, I use a maximizer here to boost up uh, the total around 4, 4.6 dB up. And I have uh, put a headroom here f at 1 dB. And uh, this is a cool thing. This is the from K meter is a dynameter where I can see exact I'm a, uh, I reference my references for title just now and, uh, I can change it to Apple uh, AES uh, old engineering society um, yeah, Spotify YouTube whatever the point is it should, I have a level here on uh, 8 um, PSR perceived loudness level of eight, um, 8 what it was now it's 10 and 10 is the target I reset it and uh, but this should be green or blue if it's red it's too hot it's too compressed 
up here I have um, uh, same kind of thing uh, I can watch my dynamics I can watch my lefts I can watch my peaks in the signal as you can see uh, I have a good amount of headroom here but uh, it tells me that it's too hot somewhere but uh, it's because of the drumming I guess uh, I, I chose to overlook that. Uh, we have a lost uh, loudness unit full scale. It's hovering around uh, between 21 and 28. Uh, short term. Uh, internal loudness. Yeah, now it's very quiet, so now it's not so high. <laughs> it's around 23 uh, loudness units. So, uh, as you can see, there's not so much going on here. It's mainly the EQ and uh, the level, the level uh, increase that I've done here. So if I do like this, play a little bit louder. Uh, just now I have a gain matching system here, but if I take it away and I bypass, this is the original level. It drops considerably. This is with the EQ and everything in. It's not a drastic thing, but it's uh, quite a big difference in uh, in uh, the total level. So um, there you got it. It's uh, a quite difficult song as well. So. Uh, it's not a very easy. Uh, it's not easy to master this complexity in the material. And, uh, it's not like a four by four bang, chick bang. Chick, uh, that's a rock band. It's a lot more consistent. Here you have a lot of dynamics, so um, the soft part should be soft, and the loud part not too loud, but it's coming like a rocket when it's coming. So. Uh, I did pay too much attention to the very loud parts before, but after a while I started to pay more attention to the soft parts and uh, leave them soft. Don't uh, push them up. That's, uh, I made a cut and I pushed up the thing. That, that's not how it sounded live. This is how it sounded live. So. Uh, in, uh, I know that because I did the live job, so uh, I have a relatively fresh memory of what this is about. And uh, what I've been doing now is only polish. I polished uh, the mix a little bit. So, let's uh, take it down much. And uh, it's actually uh, very important. Try not to destroy uh, the dynamic range in the material. So, uh, I, I've been trying different. So I've been trying WaveLab. I've been trying now Ozone. I tried the TG mastering system. I tried. Uh, but I ended up using this because I, I think I had the most control of this material in this uh, in this environment. So, well, here we go.